Hey, what's up guys? Sorry about that, I had to clear my throat. <laughs> Fabio here once again, and I want to welcome everybody back to another video. And today, coming at you guys with another paid request, this is the other request from Frame by Frame. Um, he wanted me to review Trap, and then he also wanted me to review Maxine, but I just reviewed that movie, so he told me, instead of reviewing that, could you review immaculate i said sure no problem i don't want people to uh send in a paid request and then not get something out of it so no big deal you know there you go but please before you guys you know before you send it in uh just use the search function here on my channel um you know every you know i have playlists for every single type of video i've ever done or just ask uh, all you have to do is ask. You can leave a comment. I will respond. You can comment on the stream. I will respond. Um, you know, before you send it in and it's something I've already done or whatever, you know, just always ask. You know, you the answer is always no until you ask, which is an old saying that I heard many years ago. And I like it, so I use it. So, yeah, don't, don't hesitate. Don't be afraid to ask. It's no big deal, folks. Um... But yeah, today we're going to be talking about Immaculate, which is a, another in the seemingly endless line of religious horror films that have been coming out for quite a while now. This one stars everybody's favorite little darling, Sydney Sweeney. I say that as a joke. Uh, I'm sure she's a nice lady. I've never met her. But yeah, this is the movie that she did earlier this year. Which honestly kind of came and went. I, I know it was hyped up. I know people were talking about it because she was in it. But after opening weekend, I don't think anybody ever mentioned it again. And I can see why. Because I didn't think it was a good movie. But that's just me. <laughs> but before we jump into the rest of this, as always, if anyone else would like to send in a paid request, you may do so down below in the description box. There is a link to my PayPal account. No amount is too big. No amount is too small. It does not have to be a movie review like this. It could be a TV series, cartoon, comic book, video game, random thoughts, rant streams, commentaries, and anything in between. That's what the paid request is there for. So again, if anybody's interested, go ahead, <coughs> send it in, and I'll get to it as soon as I possibly can. I don't know what the hell's going on in my throat right now. Um, it does motivate me to keep wanting to make videos, so it's a win-win for everybody. You guys get more of the type of videos that you would like to see me cover here on the channel. I keep making them, and at the end of the day, everybody goes home happy, uh, just like they used to say at Blockbuster. So, thank you. But Immaculate. Uh, I'll, I'll start with this. I will lead off with this. Um, in the past decade or so i guess past several years now there have been seemingly a a never-ending string of these religious type of horror movies whether it's another exorcist movie or it's about exorcism or it's something like this and you know religion is evil and all they want to do is kill everybody and possess people and i'm just so sick of these kind of films to be on now this is not a rant because the movie didn't make me angry or piss me off but i didn't like the movie i wasn't a fan of the movie but i'm just so sick and tired of these kind of movies i mean exorcist the original exorcist i have never seen it's a personal choice um but Outside of that, I, I just am not a fan of these kind of movies. It's just like, okay, I get it. Religion is evil and possession and they want to murder and demons. And I'm like, okay, I just, I get so sick of it because that's the world that we live in now. Not to get into a uh, philosophical debate. But that's just the world that we live in where people don't believe in any, well, they believe in the religion of themselves. So there's that. That's called narcissism. But, you know, if you try to have some kind of religion, you're looked down upon and you're evil and this and that. And I'm just so sick of it. I grew up Catholic. I went to Catholic school. I went through all the uh, sacraments and everything. Am I the most religious person in the world? No, I'm not. Do I tend to be? No, I don't. Um, it has its purposes. It has its uses. 
Uh, there's nothing wrong with it, just as long as you're not crazy and you use it against people and, you know, use it as an excuse for your behavior and, you know, that sort of thing. Because um, I know a lot of people that are religious and they're normal and they're not weird. It's just that's what they choose to believe in and that's fine. I don't have a problem with it. Just don't be a jerk. You know, I'll, I'll refrain from cursing here. Uh, don't be a jerk. And don't use it to screw people over and use it as an excuse and, and that sort of thing. If you're going to do it, do it the right way. Uh, but these kind of films, I was never a fan of. And especially in more recent years, in the, in the critical aspect of it, a lot of people, especially with this movie I was reading, they bring up certain things that have happened in the past couple of years that are pretty huge in good ways, like the overturning of Roe versus Wade, and they use it as a metaphor for all this, and I'm just like, shut up, you people are morons. Nobody wants to hear you talk. I certainly don't want to hear you talk, but anyway, excuse me, I digress. But I just wanted to kick things off with that. But Immaculate is uh, the story, there's a nun who was played by Sidney Sweeney when she was a kid, she actually died for a few minutes. She was clinically dead. And she had an epiphany that God wanted her to do bigger and better things. And he saved her. And, and there is a purpose for her in this world. So she becomes a nun. She goes to Italy, which I thought was cool. I don't think they actually shot it there. But um, it's cool that the story goes there. And she goes to this... Uh, I guess it's a, again, I'm not the most religious person in the world. Wherever they go, they go. she goes to this place where they take care of older nuns for the most part. And these weird things start happening. Um, and then she actually finds out that she is pregnant. And she finds out that it's all, spoiler alert, it's all a setup. It's all a ruse where they are impregnating these young nuns. Um and you know doing weird experiments with the babies and the babies are demons and everything and they're using it to kind of keep it going so she has to deal with all the wackos that are there and then she also has to potentially do something with this kid which of course at the end of the movie spoiler alert she gives birth to it it's a demon and it's crazy and everything and then she kills it and that's the end and there you go this movie was very boring, to be honest. For for something that was labeled a horror movie, or a suspense movie, or a thriller movie, I don't, I don't really think it fits in the horror category, to be honest. I mean, it's not it's it's not a slasher movie. It's not you know Nightmare on Elm Street or anything like that. But I guess the marketing did that. I don't know. I didn't pay attention to the marketing because it's like okay, here's another yet another religious type of horror film where they want to say religion is bad and everything. I have no interest in that. So why would I pay attention to the to the marketing on it? Ah, excuse me, needed a drink. Um So I wouldn't really say it if it's a horror film. That's just how I look at it. I mean, suspense, thriller, mystery, yeah, it fits into those categories at least in my opinion. But horror, not really. Um, I just thought it was really boring. It, it, it wasn't scary. Um, even like the jump scares, I was like, okay, it's pretty simple. There, She's standing there talking to someone and then someone comes up behind her and it's not really scary. Sydney Sweeney does okay. I read that the script was written about 10 years ago and she had read the script back then and wanted to do the movie but because of different things the movie was not able to get made and then it kind of went away and then when she blew up when she got really popular she actually bought the script because she wanted to make it she's listed as a producer on the film and then uh the director is actually a guy that she has worked with before so they have, uh, I guess, a, a working relationship, and he, she wanted him to do the movie, so there you go. I don't think it's shot particularly well. Again, this is a common thing 
that I have been saying about a lot of movies lately, a lot of newer films, the camera doesn't move. They put the camera on a tripod and then it's just like what I'm doing right now. When I film all, pretty much all my videos, uh, of course, some I do on my phone, some other things, but the camera is, right now, my camera is sitting on a tripod and it is not moving. It is, it is a static shot, as they call it. Most of the shots in this movie, unless you know it was a chase scene or some action or people are moving around, there was nothing to it. It was just the camera was just sitting there. And again, for people to argue that the movies that are being made today are the greatest movies ever and so beautiful looking and blah blah. No, they're not because the camera doesn't do anything. The the color grading it's all like a gray they all they took they gutted all the color out of the film for the most part they probably did that in post production but they took all the life out of the colors in the movie it's all very and i get it it's it's that kind of film that's what they wanted to do but they took all the life out of it unless there's a scene where like fire is involved no, they they muted all the colors. They took out all the tones and everything. It looks very gray. And I understand that from a creative standpoint, that's what they were looking for, but I don't like it. A lot of movies do that now too, where there's no life in the colors. There's no color grading anymore. It's just either that's how they do it with the lighting in the film or they most of the time I think they do it in post-production because it's easier to do that now in post-production than it was say 20, 30, 40 years ago. So there's that. The rest of the cast, I don't recognize any of the names. I don't recognize any of the faces. I, 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 they did okay, but I'm just like, eh. The movie did okay when it came out. It cost nothing to make. It only cost $9 million, and I think it made like 25 But it came out the same weekend as Late Night with the Devil, which I know a lot of people love that movie and praise that movie. I haven't seen it, to be honest. I If I don't see it, I'll be okay. It's not that big of a deal if I don't see it. It's just how I look at it. But this was a film that was hyped up because Sidney Sweeney was in it, and then it came and went. After opening weekend, you didn't hear a single thing about it again. I want to say that I saw a trailer for this, but I didn't see many movies last year in the theater. Or, I mean, the only movie that I've seen in the theater this year was Deadpool and Wolverine. But I'm trying to think, did I see a trailer? I don't think I did. No, I don't think I did. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe I'm getting it confused with something else, probably. Because like I said, there there are just so many. There is a overabundance of these kind of movies that have been coming out for years now. It's like they all just kind of mesh together. And, and most of them, again, after opening weekend, people don't talk about it. I mean, Exorcist Believer or Daydream Believer or whatever you want to call it. After opening weekend, nobody talked about that film. And it... It didn't make anything near what they spent to, to get the, the license to get the property. So they're probably not going to make any more, which I would not be complaining. I don't think anybody would be complaining because nobody asked for another Exorcist film. Nobody asked for an Exorcist TV series. But yet they exist for whatever reason. <clears throat> Is this a movie that I would ever watch again? No. Is this a movie that I would pick up on Blu-ray and put in my collection? No. Not really. Not really. Anyway, um, there was, to be honest, there just wasn't really much to say. If, if you've seen one of these kind of movies, honestly, they're all the same. Like, I remember when I was in high school... It was high school? Yeah, I think I was in high school. Maybe like 8th grade. That movie came out called uh, The Exorcism of Emily Rose. And I remember people like hyping that up. And people wanting to go see it. And I'm like, really? Like, no, I'm good. Nobody ever talks about that film. 
There was that other movie, I think it was called A Haunt. I don't think it was an exorcism movie or, or like a religious-themed horror movie. But there was like A Haunting in Connecticut. People really hyped that up after opening weekend. Ain't nobody talking about that movie. So there you go. But it's just, this is just another bland, boring, unoriginal, uninspired, religious theme horror movie. The only reason why anybody paid a little bit of attention to it is because Sidney Sweeney was in it. That's it. And again, she did okay. I'm not saying she didn't do good. She did all right. And she's not ugly, but I'm just like, okay. I don't like this no more. <laughs> anyway, I hope that you guys enjoyed my review of Immaculate. Yes, there was no cursing and anger and rage because it didn't need to be. But anyway, uh, I did get a couple more paid requests. We'll knock those out in the next couple of videos. And then we'll tomorrow, today's Sunday, Monday, we'll, uh, we'll get back to the the big green guy. So we got a couple more movies to get into for uh, paid requests, and then we'll jump right back into good old Godzilla. There we go. We'll just call it good old Godzilla. That'll work. Anyway, as always, once again, thank you guys for watching. Take care, and we'll talk to you on the next one. Later. Come on. <laughs>